Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the whiteboard test and juniors. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, do you think system design questions are good interview questions for mid or junior level developers? Since they don't, they, since they won't be architecting the system, they work on themselves. I asked because I bombed a system design interview the other day. Don't worry about that, dude. I kind of just assume when you have these leading questions, whoever you are, that you have some personal experience or vendetta to, to get my blessing on. So I'm going to try and bless you now and say that no, usually the uh, the thing that I like about the whiteboard test or like these sorts of system design questions is that it is one of those ways that you where you very quickly figure out the experience level of somebody but if you're hiring a junior profile you should be able to figure that out like that basically it's very easy to figure out if somebody is a junior you don't have to take it all the way to the whiteboard test I need less, usually less than 15 minutes with a candidate to figure out if they're a junior developer or not because uh, and this is something that really comes down to that thing that I've well, this is what I preach at the very least. If if you are a software company and you do not have a senior software developer that you trust that can do the evaluations and like all that stuff, you're basically dead in the water. There is nothing you can do to fix that that situation. That's the first thing that you need. Without a person like that with that type of experience, you, you can basically just forget about quality control of your software developers because you have no practically no accurate way of evaluate of evaluating who you're hiring so in that scenario it really is in my opinion just best to do the Google thing and that is to just give people computer science questions and pray like and pray like or and of course like a personal interview just to make sure that they're a good culture fit but the system design question that is completely in my opinion it's pointless to ask that from a junior level software developer unless it is a very simple system. Now for mid-levels and seniors it's a different story and I'm gonna touch on why. Uh, but f the thing that I, I want you to understand because there's something I'm hooking into in this question and that is since they won't be architecting the system they work on themselves. That is a very dangerous thought for you. And I'm gonna tell you why. The worst mistake that you as a software developer can make in terms of uh, career progression and like how you th how you view yourself in like to, and your role within the IT community and like in your company and so forth is to think of yourself as a service that just produces code that is not what you are you are the translation between requirements and software that is what you are you are the person who is going to take the business requirements and return and basically turn that into a digital representation that's what I love about I like to I mean this is usually how I think about software software is just the digital representation of a physical system that is what in essence it is almost always and that's also why what it's Conway's law or where like uh, every organization will design systems that it reflects their communication or like the way that the business works if I'm not mistaken and I believe that to be completely true 100% true I've never seen it fail it's always basically the same thing and that is what your job is and you can think of it as being a boat builder there's a lot of people building a boat but if you don't know what the boat looks like well then all I can use you for is for to hammer in the nails and that's not very useful I can get a hundred people to do that for a fraction of your salary. The goal is for you to understand what we're building so that you can make informed good decisions while you are building. That doesn't mean that you have to be in all the architect meetings, but I'm expecting you to understand that we're building a skyscraper or we're building a shed or we're building a car. If you have no clue of that, then you're pointless. Or rather, you're not pointless. I mean, it's just that you are a fraction as useful as somebody who actually understands that you have to have at least a basic understanding of what you're making otherwise you're actually a very dangerous person to have in the company uh, and you know me I'm just speaking personally here if I were to I, and I have 
guys I have interviewed people like that and it's like immediately yeah you're out of this yeah, out of this interviewing process I, I won't hire a person that thinks that way simply because I can I mean finding someone who can produce code that's not a problem holy shit we're drowning in people like that but the problem is this mindset that you think that your job is just to write the the syntax that's not your job. Your job is to understand what the company is trying to achieve and convert those problems into a digital solution. That is your job. Now, uh, with that said, giving a junior software developer uh, system design questions is a little bit much, I would say. As I said, unless the system is very simple or if the goal is to just, as I said, like that's the thing that we're going to touch on. If the goal is to have these broad questions just to figure out what what is the experience level of the person then it's a very good question but usually the sort of question when it comes to system design at the very least is better asked for to a mid or to senior level developer to just figure out do they actually have an in-depth understanding of how system design works and like do they actually know this stuff and I mean I, I usually I almost always skip this question or this this exercise when I deal with say front-end developers because I know that 99% of them have no clue whatsoever and when I talk to uh, to them I usually get these hooks where I figure out that oh okay I ask the basic questions that I need in order to figure out their skill level and they already like immediately prove that they're extremely talented or they have a, a very deep understanding of all this stuff then I'm just gonna skip all the basic stuff and just immediately level it up to these sorts of questions because now I've already established that I know that this person knows the basics I know that they know the mid-level stuff and I know that they know the senior level stuff now we're going to talk about the architect stuff like because basically what i'm trying to figure out is what level is this person at and do i have work for this person it's similar to how some movie producers when they're hiring actors i mean they have a lead role and they're hiring for the lead role and you might be as an actor applying for that lead role and but if you do a really good job maybe they're looking for someone else for that specific role but if you really impress them they're gonna have another role for you because there's more work and just because you didn't get that exact role you might have a different role it's the same thing when I at least when I do the hiring and I believe that usually that's this is what the whiteboard test is really good at because it creates a situation where you as a software developer you get to express your thoughts and your perspective on uh, on a very organic topic there, I mean there's no wrong answer to this question it really is just you showcasing where are you in your career at this moment and then the person who's doing the listening uh, this is where it all that's this is the important part if they are a senior level developer or an architect or something like that they will hear very clearly if you are a junior mid-level or a senior level software developer and if they're looking for a senior well that's that then a junior can't do so much in that situation but if they're just hiring talented people this is your chance to showcase that you are a talented person and you don't have to if you're a junior level software developer just try to be a really good junior do the best that you can at your level and I and just try to trust that the person who's doing the evaluation is a mature individual who understands that you know if I give praise to my son or daughter for doing a great job on the football field well, that's not this I, I'm not expecting the, these kids to play at the professional league level but I can still praise them for doing a good job at their level so what I want you to take away from this is that I do believe that system design questions are very good questions to ask of mid-levels to seniors and in some case juniors if you understand what you're looking for and if you understand that you have to put it at different levels a junior cannot of course answer very complicated questions around architectures and stuff like that but that's not the point the point is for them to get a chance to kind of show that they understand the bigger picture when you're designing a system and for the juniors out there I very much warn you to get into this sort of headspace that oh yeah but that's not my job and I should not have to know how all of these systems and so forth work that's not how IT works my friend it's the same thing I tell the, the idiots because there's no nicer way to put it the idiot front-end developers who believe that their job ends at the fetch call have a great day. Have a great day.